Hello and welcome to thesixpaxis.com. I'm Stefan and today we've got PlayStation VR 2 to review. We've had the last week to go hands-on with this thanks to a review unit sent to us by Sony and we've really been able to dive into all of the new games, all of the new features, the technology and the advances that it's been able to make over the original PlayStation VR. So for today's video, we're going to start off with a little look at the hardware itself once again, and then we'll dive into the more experiential stuff, the video games that you're able to play, and eventually get to our judgment on the headset itself. So without much further ado, let's dive in. Right, so let's do a very quick tour of this headset. We've got a very familiar halo mounting design from the original PlayStation VR. You've got the same button, you've got the same ratchet at the back to secure it. But then this padding is not quite as thick and firm as it was in the original generation. And that is in part because, well, firstly, weight concerns, but also there's a rumble motor up here. When you get into the headset itself, you've got the two lenses, they're Fresnel lenses, and they are in front of 2000 by 2040 pixel squares for your eyes. And that is four times the resolution of the original PlayStation VR. You've also then got IR's lights and sensors up here for some eye tracking which allows you to focus on objects in games and then that can be used to interact with them or simply to highlight them and it can also be used by the PlayStation to improve the rendering of what you're actually looking at and foveated rendering they call it so that it can really highlight and target where it's using its graphical powers. Around the front, we then have the four cameras which allow for the inside-out tracking. These cameras are what looks for your surroundings, maps it out, gives you your play area, and then handles everything. You don't need an external camera to do any of this. It also tracks the IR lights on the controllers that you have in your hand and allows for full motion control, which is very accurate when it's in view and 90% accurate when it's out of view, but you can do a lot of relative stuff there, so that's fine. We've also got a nice touch in some vents, which allow for air, hot air to escape so that you have less chance of misting up the headset. Finally, we come to the bottom where you've got the power button and microphone, and then on the back here, you've got the headphones mount, which allow for you to plug in a 3.5 millimeter jack if you don't like this design. And we've also got the flanged light guard, and this allows for a much better fit around your eyes to protect you from outside light. Turning to these sense controllers, and there's a really nice design and a lot of technology packed into them. Around this ring, you have all of the IR lights, which are emitting and being tracked by the headset. Then on the actual grip itself, you have one analog stick, two of the face buttons, one trigger, and you've got the R1 or L1 button, which has been repurposed into a middle finger button as well. Throughout all of this, you've got sensors so that it knows which fingers and thumbs are in what places, so you can do gestures in games, which is a really neat trick. You've then got everything that you would expect from the dual sense controller. You've got an adaptive trigger and you've got a haptic motor in there. Although everything has been scaled down to suit this controller, you've got a smaller battery and you need to eke that battery life out. You've got about five and a half hours out of this, but it is notable that the adaptive trigger and the haptic feedback felt a little bit lighter than in the dual sense controller. That that is forgivable when you consider all of the other things that you're getting to immerse yourself into the VR world. Another thing that I really appreciate about this design is the placement of this sensing ring. It is down at, towards the bottom of your hand, almost at your wrist. And this allows for the face of your hands to be open to touching things. If, for example, you've got games where you've got a lot of inventory management on your chest or your hips or even over your, or on your shoulders, you can actually physically touch your chest as opposed to having the controller bump into you perhaps slightly unexpectedly because you're not sure where the shape of the controller is when you can't see anything because you're in VR. All in all though, it's a really nice design. You've just got the weakness of the battery life and I will say that the USB-C port is a little bit fussy when it comes to plugging things in. But this is a fantastic controller, a pair of controllers, and let's go to put them into use in some video games. The shift to inside-out tracking and a single cable means that setting up PSVR 2 is about as seamless as possible. 
Once you've plugged it into the front of the console, the PS5 will start you off on the TV before transitioning to using the headset itself, working your way through the things like calibrating the eye tracking with a funky little graphic, setting the interpapillary distance, and scanning the room around you for the first time with its neat polygonal overlay. Some VR systems will put you into a 3D rendered virtual space for the system menu, but PSVR 2 sticks with the tried and true of just projecting the flat screen PS5 menu in front of you. It gets the job done. From there, it's onto the games, and since PSVR 2 misses out on a bundle demo like Astro's Playroom or the Playroom VR, Horizon Call of the Mountain will be the most obvious first port of call for many people. And this really shows off the leap in visual fidelity, the capturing all of the visual style of finesse of the main Horizon series, and really giving you a sense of the scale that you don't get from Aloy's adventures. It also really shows off that jump in screen resolution, banishing the visible pixel grid from the original PSVR and making it much easier to stare off at details in the distance. This does still come with the caveats that your view is passing through lenses and that does lead to a blurry periphery, which goes hand in hand with foveated rendering. And there can be some light flaring when there's off center bright lights on a darker background. Another factor here is that the Halo mount is comfortable for longer playing sessions, but as with any VR system, it can shift around as you play and move, and slip you out of the visual sweet spot that gives you the sharpest visuals. By and large, the inside-out tracking works perfectly as well. For your play space, you can adjust the floor boundary from that initial scan very easily, creating a mesh wall that then appears overlaid on the game when you get too close to it. The cameras also do a fantastic job of tracking your hands in the sense controllers, and does so far more reliably than the original PSVR light balls could manage. Yes, you can still confuse it by being a bit too close, totally out of view, or moving too quickly, and it's obviously up to the games as well to interpret and translate motion to interact with virtual objects. But 99% of the time, it is perfectly good enough. For the launch lineup, Sony touts an impressive 37 games, with more coming constantly, it feels like. You've got everything from Horizon Call of the Mountain and Star Wars Tales from the Galaxy Edge, which give you plenty of combat-laden action, to smaller and quirkier games like Job Simulator and What the Bat. And then there's also more relaxing experiences such as Puzzling Places, Kayak VR Mirage and The Last Clockwinder. There's a fantastic breadth to the experiences available to you. However, it's also fair to note that a lot of these games are being upgraded from PSVR, many of them freely and some paid, or have been ported across from PC VR and standalone VR headsets. So it is great and important to have earlier PSVR games like Job Simulator, Thumper and Moss being upgraded to take advantage of PSVR 2, but these are also games that a lot of experienced VR players will have already played. And that also leads us into what the future holds for PSVR 2. Yes, it's fantastic technology, and there is a hustling and bustling dev scene around it, but we're not really clued in onto what is coming after this launch window. It really feels as though Sony will once again have to try and do most of the heavy lifting for bigger budget VR adventures, and we hope that there is some further announcements not far behind the headset's launch. So there we have it, PlayStation VR 2. It brings Sony's virtual reality platform back to the very cutting edge to stand right alongside everything from the MetaQuest 2 in terms of resolution and frame rates and stuff like that, to go up against PC VR systems such as the Valve Index in terms of the visual fidelity that PlayStation 5 is able to put out. You've got the PS5 powering it, and so it can push these stunning visuals. And then you've got the Sense controllers, which make full motion control and interaction standard across the board. And then we've got some early showcases for what the system can do from Sony's first party game and the various partners that they have already producing games for the launch window. But when it comes to that question of whether you should buy PlayStation VR 2 or not, that is entirely up to you. This is right up there with going between PlayStation and Xbox at the start of a generation. Is it up to you to decide what you're going to get out of this system? Existing VR users will be able to see the value to them. They'll be able to look at the game launch lineup, see the games that are getting free upgrades and paid upgrades, see the new games that are coming out that are going to be enticing to them. Similarly, if you bounced off PlayStation VR, the first one on PS4, 
you may be not going to be so invested in getting PlayStation VR 2. And if you are a brand new person considering VR for the first time, then you do have the sticker shock factor to consider and the cost of getting a PlayStation 5 as well, if you don't already own one. That's all that we've got for this video, but we do have some other PlayStation VR 2 things going up on YouTube, and we've got plenty more coming on the sickfaxis.com itself. So before you go, if you've enjoyed this video, please do like, subscribe, click the bell icon, all of the usual YouTube things, and hopefully we will see you again soon, whether that's here on YouTube or over on the sickfaxis.com. Goodbye.